Hey guys, welcome back and thank you for joining me on another video. In today's video, we're going to be covering cumulative layout shift, what it is and how you guys can optimize for it. So before I quickly get into it, I just wanted to cover that I've launched a Facebook group called the SEO Tribe. Please check it out in the link below. And basically it's just a dedicated SEO group that provides daily SEO value. So if you're interested in learning more, once again, link in the description below. Now, moving on, cumulative layout shift, what is it? Essentially, cumulative layout shift is one of three core web vitals that Google will be using as ranking factors in 2021. So the good news is, is that you can actually start optimizing for these um, sooner rather than later. And I'll quickly put up an image right now of all three uh, core web vitals. So we have um, CLS, which is uh, what we're talking about today. We have FID, which is first input delay. And we also have uh, LCP, which is largest contentful paint. So there are metrics to each the where Google kind of varies between um, good, um, average and really poor scores. So we're going to be focusing on CLS today and on their score ranking, it goes from 0.25 all the way down to 0.1. And we want to get as a good or there or about score as possible. So definitely we're going to try and hit that 0.1 mark. So basically what is cumulative layout shift or in other words CLS? Essentially what it is, is that it is the visual stability of the page and how much a page shifts from its point of origin, depending on what's happening on a page. Um, so it could shift due to an image, for example, it could shift due to an iframe, it could shift due to an AdSense ad etc etc so these are things that google basically looks at is when it's calculating cumulative layout shift it basically is just calculating the distance of how far that page has to move down to compensate for what's happening on the page itself so it's a user experience metric in other words and it's really really useful to understand this because as i mentioned before it is a ranking factor and it will impact how your website is viewed by Google and more importantly, how it's viewed by users. You don't want to have a website that has a very poor user experience. It's just a flow on effect for very poor um, conversion rates. Possibly it could impact bounce rates and other user behavior metrics. So let's go through a few examples of what are these specific issues that are quite common so i'll put a video up with a video example up with a, a, with each one of these examples so let's quickly go into adsense so here's an example of an adsense issue so i'll quickly ping it right now so as you've seen with that adsense issue the problem with that is that the page has to shift down to compensate for that ad that is quite annoying um, I definitely come across a lot when it comes to a lot of those um, article um, websites, uh, publications. Um, perfect example is, is in Australia, we have Sydney Morning Herald and they were quite uh, common experiences that, that I would have when I would be reading some content that um, significant amounts of content would get pushed down to favour in an ad, for example. So that's one. Um, in e-commerce stores, for example, it's really, really popular to see that um, different buttons emerging and um, clicking or moving around. Uh, I'll quickly show you an extreme e-commerce example of that happening where a button gets uh, basically loaded in a very, very poor manner where it creates a really negative user experience. So I'll play that video now. Now imagine if that was you and you were in an e-commerce situation where you're going to buy something possibly and it just creates a horrible user experience in that manner. Like that would be an absolute nightmare in my opinion. Imagine trying to get a refund from that too. It just creates a bit massive snowball and pain in the butt. So definitely uh, I would recommend to take them into consideration when um, for e-commerce users and uh, button placement is really important. So another most popular one that we have is dynamically injected content. So this could be font, for example. This could be um, other aspects where things kind of load up a little bit slowly or it takes up time to load. And then because of that loading difference, so a perfect example would be a font that's supposed to be bold, but it loads up as being thin or italic or any other manner. And as it loads, it pops up and all the pixels load up and it pushes down content further uh, 
beneath the fold or further down the line. So that's another thing to take into consideration, especially if you're reading something important. You lose your train of thought and it creates that annoying user experience. Um, another thing to take into consideration is your DOM, your, so your document object model, and how your page loads. So there's a few variations of how your page loads, whether it's synchronous or asynchronous um, loading. I'll cover that in just a moment, what that is. And basically, um, how it loads would dictate how certain elements will pop up. And if there's a certain lag behind it, an element may get pushed beneath the fold or may move or jumble around the page. So that's one thing you need to take into consideration as well. So I've covered the most common aspects. So you've got AdSense, images, uh, buttons, and uh, dynam dynamically injected content. So these are things to take into consideration. So now moving on to how are you actually going to optimize these areas? So the way you can optimize them is fairly simple. So when you look at images, for example, make sure that they have proper height and width set on your web page. So when the image loads, it's appropriately sized to match the height and width. You don't want to create a situation where the, the image just loads really poorly or incorrectly and it pushes down a lot of content or god forbid it overlaps content that someone's reading and you can't read it because an image is loaded really poorly over text so take that into consideration when it comes to images when it comes to adsense and um, with uh, different aspects of it loading across your page whether it's in the top on sidebars or bottom bar of your website definitely have a container created on your website possibly that houses AdSense or what you could do is manipulate the CSS that's a good way of looking at it so you can change the padding and you can reserve a specific amount of space to ensure that it doesn't push down too much content or it gets loaded off screen which would be even better user experience with dynamically injected content try to make sure that it loads off screen or it preloads that would be even a better option so you can speak to a developer about preloading and um, you can also try and figure out if there's any third party plugins that would assist you with preloading fonts or other dynamically injected content. So essentially what that means is as the page loads, um, it will load immediately instead of having that lag where it delays a few seconds or even a minute or two after a web page is open. So definitely take that into consideration. And those are a lot of my main tips. Um, and the final one would be relating to the DOM or document object model. So I'm going to quickly put up an image here of synchronous and asynchronous loading. So basically asynchronous loading means that different elements can load at the same time. They don't need to load one after the other. Where asynchronous loading just means it's like a domino. One element loads and if there's a problem with that element loading, it slows down the rest of the chain essentially. So this is why I was saying before, when it comes to synchronous loading, it's not always the best approach to have on a website because it could create a bigger cumulative layout shift issue where it sh uh, the lag of these other elements loading in the background will create that shift in the page in the visual um, elements of it moving around. So definitely take that into consideration. Speak to a web developer I would recommend to determine which loading is better for your website. In most circumstances, asynchronous loading is more ideal, but in unique circumstances, synchronous loading may be the only option for you. So definitely um, speak to a professional regarding that. And now I can move on to the tools that you can use to assist you in determining um, cumulative layout shift. So you have a few tools available on the market. One is your, good, your Google PageSpeed Insights tool. So essentially what you can do is you can plug in your um, website into Google PageSpeed Insights and it does show up the other core web vitals. So that's one thing you can look into. You have Google Search Console report, which shows you your core web vitals and certain pages that could be affected. You have a cool official Google extension plugin, which is the core web vitals extension for Google Chrome. And it actually highlights uh, your core web vital issues, including CLS. And finally, 
you also have um, Google Develop Tools. So what you can do is you can go into the Performance tab, you can load up a page in, under Google Developer Tools, and then the Performance tab section will actually highlight your CLS issue. So I'll put up a screenshot of that right now. So these are tools that you can use to help you out. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and you've learned a lot. So to recap what you guys have kicked off, so you guys have learned essentially what cumulative layout shift is, common cumulative layout shift issues, um, how to optimize for them, and tools that you can use in your skill set to help you identify problems as well. So once again, thank you guys so much. I'll also be releasing uh, two other videos regarding core vitals for first input delay and largest contentful paint later on. So please subscribe and like this video and stick around for the next two ones. See you guys.